five years without sex. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Sip Five Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, not your partner. Now, this particular topic came into being. A young lady talked about the fact that her husband, who's around 50, uh, is not open to having sex. And they haven't had sex in more than five years. And she needs the sex. And she's told him, almost pleaded with him, probably has pleaded with him. Uh, and it's just not working. They've even gone and gotten pills. and But he refuses to take them. So the question is kind of, is that grounds for divorce? And I'm a firm believer. And you guys have heard me say, I believe in working relationships. You can work through all obstacles if you have two people that are willing to work together to make it happen. But when you have one person who digs their feet in and is determined that I'm not willing to budge, because I believe mental or physical abuse are grounds for divorce. Holding sex from a person by choice, even if you have, even if it's an ego issue, like because you're a man and you don't want to feel weak by taking pills or... You don't want to go to counseling because men don't go to counseling. Those are still choices. And if you're not willing to bend and say, you know what? I can't let the world who tries to tell you what a man looks like make my decisions for me. I have to make the decision that's best for my relationship. That's why I said you got to have two people that are willing to work together. In order for that to happen, you also have to have a safe place, and I've talked about this before, inside of the relationship where the person feels that I can be very open. And in this case, if he does have those issues, he can tell you, I have this male thing. And as men, we don't do this. And so it's making it tough for me. But at the same time, and this is one of the challenges I try to share with, with ladies all the time, is quit telling your your man that I want a man I want you to be open I want you to be vulnerable I want you to share everything with me because we're in this together and then the moment that he becomes vulnerable and shares his innermost feelings and maybe that brings him to tears and all of a sudden you go whoo man and now you're judging him and you, now you start to look at him as weak he's no longer the guy that you thought he was you can't have it both ways. You can't tell the guy to be vulnerable and act like a human being. And then when he does it, you turn on him. At the same time, if you tell a guy to play that, that, that male role model, you know, that he's strong and nothing gets to him, you guys will never, and this is one of those times I use the word never and it's very rare that I do, you will never, have the ultimate relationship. The reason I say that is because every human being has issues, has things inside them, um, has doubts. And if I have to play a role with you because I got to play this male, because you notice I'm saying playing the male role that the world has told us what a man is, then there are conversations I'm not going to have with you as my partner. So you will never get to see the real me. You'll never get to truly touch my heart. We'll never have the best relationship that we can have because I'm always holding stuff from you. I want you guys to think about that. If you're a partner, because they don't feel safe. We've talked about this before. You got to have a safe place in your relationship. I got to know I can come if we're in this together. Um, I'd even share like in, in my relationship with my wife, we, I had, um, I think maybe twice I actually cried and it's not because, um, I tried to play a macho role and that's the only reason it happened twice or that I was worried about how she responded because of the fact that I did do it a couple of times. 
I'm a true believer. I'm going to be who I am. But the reason that I don't cry a lot, and I don't think most people do, and that's the reason this is all crazy to me, because we act like people walk around and just cry for no reason at all. Now, there are some people, <laughs> but those are rare. But most people, when they cry, it's because they're truly affected by something. And if you want to get to the heart of your partner, he's got to know that he's able to drop his guards and be a human being. And he's got to know that you're not going to hold that against him in public or in private, but definitely in public where you start to talk behind his back to others like, yeah, he was up there crying. Who scared me? Because I ain't used to that. I thought I had a strong man and you know, he out here. You just messed up what's called that safe place. You just destroyed it. Because now he's thinking, here's the place I can go to get comfort and you turned on them and went outside. Or inside, and that's why I said also privately, because if privately you start to act towards him differently, and some ladies I've seen do that, where the guy um, became vulnerable, and she started disrespecting him all of a sudden. She would raise her voice at him. She just, because in that vulnerable spot, she looked at him as being weak, and her respect for him disappeared. Yeah, the relationships ended up breaking up, but that's why, because she hollered about wanting a safe place and being a, a, a man that was going to be open and vulnerable, but she wasn't able to handle it. And that's not saying it's easy because we're in a world that teaches men that you're not supposed to be vulnerable. And then women thinking that with their man, that he's not that, but you're asking for it. So be prepared. But anyway, in this particular um, instance, I believe any mental or physical abuse is time to move on. Especially if you have a partner that's not willing to address those. And in this case, if she goes to him and somebody had recommended to her to tell him that if you're not willing to do it, then I need you to give me permission to go outside and do it. Because she doesn't want to just go cheat and 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 um, be unfaithful, so the person was saying, so let him know this is not what I want to do. But if you're not willing to do that, then um, I need to be able to step outside. Now I'm not saying that's good, bad, right, or wrong. Um, th this is choices on how how strong you believe in your sex and all that. But in terms of people saying, well, it's a human thing, and when you can't survive without it, that's garbage. Um, it's just up to you as an individual if you choose to. And the reason I say that, and, and a lot of people don't like to hear me say that, but there's, again, a difference between a need and a want. A need is something you can't survive without. Guess what? Sex, whether you like to hear it or not, if you don't have it, you will live. Trust me. I'm a perfect example of that. I tell people, I said, um, probably the last five to seven years of my marriage, I think uh, my wife and I had sex once. And that might even be an exaggeration. And a lot of people, when they hear me say that, first they're shocked that I'm willing to share that. But then they're like, how did you do it, man? You didn't ever think of stepping outside? And Well, those of you that don't know my story, um, my wife fought cancer for 17 years, and I lost her actually six years ago to that cancer. So when people hear that, they go, oh, okay, well, see, your situation was different, so I understand you know, why you didn't have sex and why you didn't step outside. No, you understand why I didn't have sex. If you're a person that's willing to cheat and step outside your marriage, you don't understand the fact that I didn't step outside because you would have stepped outside. Because here's what I get people to understand. That situation, if I did step outside, my partner would probably even understand and forgive me for doing it because she understood she couldn't do it. Does that make sense? So if I didn't do it, knowing I could probably get away with it because of that, it's because it's not in me. That's not who I am. I always tell people this always, especially when it comes to cheating, that is a character issue. That's your integrity. Um, this is not a male-female conversation. Um, whether you're attracted to other people, that will happen till the day you're, you can't see again. <laughs> you'll always be attracted physically to people. You'll also be attracted to people mentally. 
crossing the line, that's a whole different ball game. That is a choice. And when you do that, it is a choice. So I don't buy any of the excuses people come up with. It's a choice. Now, even in this young lady's case, some people go, well, that's a, that's a good reason right there, Ron. Maybe a good reason for her to, to, to get divorced. Not a good reason for her to cheat. Because the reason I say the divorce part is, again, any mental or physical abuse, I personally believe, is time to move on. If you're a person that feels you have to have sex, then mentally, you guys follow me? Mentally, this is disturbing. You're, you're getting stressed. You're getting frustrated. Mentally. And then that mental stuff will break you down physically. That's why I say it mental or physical abuse because you get to make that decision no one else can make that decision for you if you're mentally or physically abused my personal perspective it's time to move on so i had a friend and we were having that conversation today and she told me that she has a, a friend that they were having the same conversation because he again the husband is the one that doesn't want to have sex and she was trying to, she was saying, I, I don't get it. I don't understand what's going on. And she said, well, she told her friend, the reason is because of the way you talk to him, the way you treat him. I've watched you. And she said, you talk to him like he's a child and almost like you're his mom. And she said, what man is going to want to sleep with his mom? And the girl came back to her, you know, probably within that same week and told her, did you talk to my husband about anything? She's like, no, I haven't talked to him. She said, he told me the exact same thing. I had the conversation with him and he told me, why would I go? Why would I want to go to bed with my mother? See, all perspective. But the key is they were able to have a conversation and obviously it's a safe place because he was willing to open up and tell her what, what was actually going on because you guys know i said a safe place has got to be where i feel i can i can spill my guts i can tell you exactly how i'm feeling and again ladies make sure that's in your relationship because if you don't you'll never ever never ever this is very few times that i use the word never you will never ever have the best relationship possible when your partner believes he's got to play this role that the world has told him what a man looks like. And guys, you can kid yourself. You will never ever have the best relationship in your, in your marriage if you believe you gotta play that role. Why? Because we all go through, we all get stressed, we all get frustrated, we all have doubts. We all that's called being a human being. The person I should be able to go to in all those moments is my partner. But if I have to play a role, this male role. That means some of the most important, crucial times in my life, I'm not going to her. How can that be a great relationship? How can it be the best relationship possible? It's not possible. So don't tell your man to be vulnerable and then switch on him the moment he does and call him weak or start. And I've seen it happen where the guy cried or whatever and she lost all respect for him. And um, from that moment on, scream at him, holler at him. She lost total respect. Yeah, the relationship ended up breaking up, which would be understandable because it's back to, like I said before, mental, physical abuse. If you don't honor me, you don't respect me, you're not willing to make the adjustments, why would I stay? Now, I know for a lot of people, they, they you know, it's like marriage. Once you get married, you stick it up to each his own. I personally am not going to do it for mental or physical abuse, even though I'm a person that totally believes in marriage and work it through things, which you can work through everything if you have two partners that want to work together. So in this case, um, the young lady has, like I said, he won't take the pills. He's not willing to go to counseling. He's not. What would you do? How would you handle that if, if you were in that particular situation? Tell me, you know what I'm saying? I, I'd love for you guys to comment, send me, uh, you can catch me on any of my social medias, as you guys know. Um, I always tell people, if you can't find me, it's because you're not looking. <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, you just type in my name and, 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 and there's all kinds of different places, different ways to catch up with me. But these are the kind of comments, conversations I want to have. I'm actually going to um, go live on my uh, podcast and stuff here soon. I'm, I'm uh, going, doing all the research now to figure out how to do this because I actually want to talk with you guys and have serious dialogue because 
we're all in this together. No one has all the answers. I share with you my perspective, my views on things, but I don't have all the answers and I don't try to play that game like, oh yes, I'm, I'm an expert. Cause I love when I hear people, oh yes, I'm, 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 I'm a relationship expert. And most of them are single. Majority of the speakers out here talking on relationships are single. They've never been, never been in a committed relationship. But they're experts at giving advice. See, there's a difference. Can you actually take that expertise that you claim to have and actually implement it inside of a relationship? See, those are the people that I personally want to talk to and listen to because you're living it, not talking about it. Everyone can give you theory. Everyone can give you their perspective, and they do. But I want people who has proof that they've been able to actually do what it is that you're teaching. You guys understand that. I had a, a, a young lady one time, she was telling me um, when I was driving, and she was a passenger, you know, doing one of the ride shares. And I had said if I had, the, if I had to go to counseling, I wouldn't go to someone who's been divorced like five different times. And that's not where I'm going to go get my information from. And she's like, well, Ron, you're an author, and you can't have that kind of perspective because people will get turned off if they hear that you think that way and stuff. And I was like, because she wanted to feel good, like she, like she was really teaching me. Because you could just tell her whole demeanor was arrogance. You guys know I said there's a difference between confidence and arrogance. She was arrogant. I could just see it. And um, like she was looking down on me. And, um, and so I allowed her to enjoy herself because I don't, I don't get caught in it. I'm not worried about how she feels or how she looks at me. But the reason I laughed because I told her, I said, um, so what you're telling me is... Which, with all your finances, will you go a different route? We'll take your finances. And you could go to someone who's been successful financially. But you got a choice. You could also go to someone who's declared bankruptcy five times. Now, they've learned a lot. Trust. We, 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 we hope they learned a lot. But they've done it five times. That's where you're going to go get your advice? See... When you put it in those kind of, all of a sudden people get to see it. And like I told her, I'm not saying I can't learn from the person in the five divorces. I can learn from the single people that ain't never been in a committed relationship. My point is that's not where I'm going to get my advice. I'm not going to them and search them out to get my information. I want to go to, I don't want to go learn about how to lose, let's talk about losing weight. Are getting, we shouldn't say losing weight because you guys know how I feel about that. That's, that's a choice too. Hopefully you're doing it for health reasons. But do I want to go to somebody who says, yes, I've lost 30 pounds five different times? Or do I want to go find somebody who's lost it healthy and consistently staying there? You guys, that's what I'm getting to. And, and it's the same thing. So, but anyway, bottom line, I got off target there, uh, off track. And got a different conversation, but I'm saying watch where you get your information from. But anyway, bottom line is I'm going to go get live because I want to be able to have conversation with you. I know I can learn from you guys as I share my perspectives because that's all they are. That's why my motto is it ain't right and wrong. It's my opinion because they're my perspectives. But anyway, the divorce thing, back to that. I personally would throw everything at them. I don't know about the permission to uh, step outside the relationship because, again, I believe in marriage. I don't believe, because to me, even if the person gives you permission, to me personally, that's still a form of cheating. I know people feel like cheating is only when the person doesn't know and you're sneaking behind their back and you're doing it. That's considered cheating. For me personally, if you step outside the relationship, you know, I know we'll call it adultery, but um, and I guess if you want to put it that way and just call it adultery versus cheating, I mean, whatever works for you. But for me personally, when it ever gets to that point that you feel you need to step outside the relationship, then we need to separate. We need to go our own ways. And in my particular case, I'm pretty sure, you know, that that might be one of those where people go, well, that's an exception. Um, ask for her permission to go outside. Uh, for me personally, like I said, um, I didn't, I never even thought about stepping outside. My personal belief is if my wife has to go through it, I have to go through it. We're in this together. Um, 
And I, so I didn't have the issue. I didn't go through the mental trauma as people would think you would go through like, oh, okay, well, you just, there, there's something wrong with you because as men, oh, those are all games. That's all garbage stuff that continues to be passed on. But if it's what you focus on becomes your reality. So if you believe that to be true, then it's true for you. I personally believed whatever my wife goes through, I must go through also because we're a team, we're a unit. And I didn't look at it as sacrificing and, you know, because some people be like, well, that's a sacrifice. See, that's the difference. You look at it as it is a sacrifice. I look at it as being committed to my wife and to our vows and to, and to marriage and, and that we said to death to us part good and bad. And if you want to call that bad, again, depends on your perspective. So for me, whatever she's got to go through, I got to go through even if that includes sex, because, and, and, and it could be, I, I'm not here to say good, bad, right or wrong. People will say, well, um, cause you don't know what's out there. And, and, and that's a lie too, because I tell people, I said in my earlier days before my wife, and maybe that's why I I'm, I'm cool. I was so cool with it because I acted a fool before my wife. I went through the being wild out there, buying into the myth of, um, man, you know, what men do and all that and sowing your oats and sleeping around. And I, I did all that crazy stuff before my wife. And then I did the committed part with my wife and I personally enjoy the committed stage. And so, um, and so maybe that's why it, for me personally. And so I don't want to put other things, other, other say, um, tell other people how to think in that, in that sense. For me personally, maybe that's why I was able to adjust and, and, and not feel like I was missing out because my partner couldn't do anything and all these other women that were available. And I'm feeling like I'm missing out. I mean, I've only been with one person, which is my wife and, and all these. I didn't have those issues. And so maybe that's what helped me through. But the bottom line is for me personally, I was able to make the adjustment and be committed to my wife and not think ever think even for a second to step outside my marriage. So anyway, as you guys know, in this case with the divorce, that's something, again, she has to have the conversation with her husband, throw everything out there, see what happens. If he's not willing to budge, he's not willing to work through it, what's your options? If you feel less strong about sex, it's time to go on. All right. And chances are it will be that way for most people, because, again, as I said before, there's a difference when you make a decision not to do it and versus the situation I was in where health was her reason. And because I understood that it made it maybe that's why it was, again, for me, I was able to adjust to it because I didn't know it would have been a difference. Maybe if she just was determined, she just wasn't going to do it just because whatever reason and then she's not open so those are decisions you have to make for yourself um my thing is that always sharing it ain't right ain't wrong is my opinion is just that sex is not a need it is a want it's a strong desire but you'll live without it you just have to decide how important that is on the top of your list and then that makes your decision because if it's mentally or physically abusing you as i said then yes it's time to move forward so those of you that we talk on uh, Self Love Monday, I'll talk to you guys on Monday. And then those of you that we're talking about the relationships, look forward to seeing you back here um, next week on Relationship Thursday. Uh, check out my, I, I came out with three new video series. You can go to ronsimplifiedmyers.online, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Myers is spelled M-Y-E-R-S because a lot of people like to spell it M-E-Y. Um, on that particular page, I have a, a discount that I put in place where pretty much you're getting all three of the new series pretty much for almost what you would pay for one. So I'm doing that as special because it's a new release and, and I want to get it in as many people's hands as possible. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, I don't know how long I'll, I'll keep it out there, but it is right there now. So, <laughs> so go on over there, take a peek. And uh, again, I look forward to talking to you guys. Make sure whatever you're doing, you're out here enjoying yourself. And I will talk to you soon. You take care and be safe. Bye-bye.